All right, what's up guys? Welcome to the bonus episode of our Kyrgyzstan Mid-Asian Ibex hunt. Okay, so on this episode, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to pick, package, and ship your trophies all the way over to Pennsylvania for Kanadi Studios to do their work. So we're gonna do a full body mount on my Ibex, and they're gonna record the process of them putting together my full I Ibex mount, and Nick's is gonna come in the form of a, a wall pedestal. So we're gonna show you the process, take you through it, show you just how easy it is to ship your trophy over there. So that if you ever guys ever kill anything that you feel like you want to mount, it's easy to send your stuff over to them. So check it out. All right, so we're gonna wrap them in bubble wrap. I'm gonna label mine in blue and Nick's in yellow. And we're gonna wrap the entire horn and then identify them and tape our individual horns and skulls uh, so that they can identify them. So just to have an X-Acto knife here, a little bit of bubble wrap, some sticky notes, and some tape. So let's go ahead and start wrapping those. Start here. You're gonna really want to wrap up the the tips of the horns really well so you don't poke through the box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wrap the initial horn for now, and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do two or three more rounds over the tip itself. I don't want any of these nubs or any of these um, horns flaking off in the process, so. So I got these extra wrapped here on the ends here, um, extra secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this one aside and start the next one. Let's do it. This literally took three minutes to do. Reinforce some of the areas here that were a little bit more knobby here on the structure of the horn. Reinforce the tip end and then the base end with extra bubble wrap and tape. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just label these Nix so the taxidermists know that this is Ibex's Nix. This is gonna be the pedestal now. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Nick here. Pedestal shoulder. Put these on the bases there. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that in tape too. Okay. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping Ibex number two. So I'm just gonna go ahead and roll up some bubble wrap and I'm gonna stuff it in that nose cavity um, just so none of it gets brittle or breaks off. Literally just do a little tear there. I'll do the same thing here with this other one. Show that in the nose cavity. Kind of protect that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with one wrap over the nose. These skulls are actually a lot hardier than like a mule deer or an elk, believe it or not. Super, super thick skulls. So you don't have to get quite as crazy on this side of it, but at the same time, better be safe than sorry. <laughs> Check it out. So it's all done. I got Nick's horns, we got my horns, we got my skull, we got Nick's skull. We're gonna go down, put them in the box. I'm gonna put the hides in there. The hides have already been salted, cleaned, so you, I don't need to expedite ship these because nothing's gonna spoil or, or uh, go rotten. I'm gonna go downstairs, and put it all in a box. All right, so check it out. So these technically have been in my freezer for over a year, but they just have a little bit of frost from my freezer. So I don't want this getting soggy. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and wrap it in a, 
or put it in a little bag here just so it doesn't get the rest of this box and everything just kind of uh, wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Here's Nick's. Um, this, this is a three quarter cape, but he's actually just gonna do a wall pedestal. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in. We're gonna go ahead and take mine. And mine is a full body cape, so. Oh. Okay, so now this is where the Tetris comes in. We're gonna figure out how we're gonna place these so we can fit everything in here. So bear with me. So what I went ahead and did is I went ahead and put Nick's Ibex in first because Nick's is a bigger Ibex and it's got a horn. So I go ahead and just laid him crisscross here. I'm gonna stick his cape right here. Stick my cape here. And I'm gonna shove these down here in the corners, these heads. Should be just about perfect. I'm gonna lay my smaller horn just kind of like that. Boom! It's almost perfection right there. Oh man, that's close. I think, man, I feel like that's pretty good right there. All right, so. Go ahead and taper up tight. Championship, I lost. <laughs> I don't know. Tape of everything. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to measure it for you real quick to give you an idea of putting basically two full body capes, two horns, and two skulls in a box, how big your box needs to be. So we're 20 by 20 by about 20. So 20 by 20 by 20, we'll get the job done on that. So we're going to take it over to FedEx right now. And Get this sucker shipped off. <laughs> All right, we're off to FedEx. Let's get this bad boy shipped off and it's gonna come alive in just a matter of weeks. <laughs> Mark here with Kanadi Studio. We just received two Ibex uh, from the Muley Freak Boys. They shipped them to us all across the country, out from Utah. So we got those in today, and we're gonna open them up and see how the hides and the horns are in here. And we're gonna start this taxidermy process. Let's check it out. So we got the horns, we got the skull, we have the hide uh, for Eric and Nick's pieces here. Um, these are gonna go off to the tannery here, so that's gonna get punched with a code that is specific to the customer's uh, number. And also the horns and skulls will get labeled and they'll get put into our inventory until we get the hide back from the tannery. So that's going off to the tannery. We're gonna get that rushed here and then we're gonna be in communication with the customer here on out talking about posing. Uh, one thing we do here at Kanadi is we do a lot of custom poses. We start with a stock form, but that's just the starting point. So from there we're doing uh, cutting that form apart and actually changing it to make um, an awesome mount for the customer. We know there's a lot of memories that go into these hunts and a lot of hard work that goes into these hunts from the customer's standpoint. And we wanna help them relive that adventure to the fullest. So when they go into their trophy room or they go into their lodge and they see that, that trophy there on the wall, that they're seeing uh, all the memories that go along with that hunt. So that's our, our goal here. So we're gonna be in communication um, with the guys there at Muley Freak 
and we're going to uh, put together a sweet pose on this guy. But the first step is get this thing off to the tannery. So now that we got the highs off to the tannery, we're gonna be contacting the Muley Freak boys, Eric and Nick, and figuring out what they wanna do for their Ibex. Uh, Wes is gonna give them a call, and we're gonna contact them and just figure out um, posing, space limitations, those types of things. We wanna make sure their mount fits in their space perfectly, it looks great, we what they envision is what they're getting, and we're gonna walk with them through this process. Now for this video, we're gonna focus on the life-size Ibex that Eric shot while I was in Kyrgyzstan. And we're gonna walk through getting a life-size form, altering it, getting on the rock habitat, everything that we do for these animals, uh, for our customers. So we're gonna start with that, that form. We just got these Ibex back in the tannery. We're gonna open up and check them out. Now that we have the skin back from the tannery, we're getting some measurements off that and we're gonna start with our stock form. Now we have many suppliers that we work with for our forms, but what we're gonna do is we're just using that as a stock form that we're gonna build off of. So we're getting something close to the pose. Eric chose a downhill pose, which really shows off the body and the horns. It's gonna be hanging on the wall. So we're gonna choose a downhill pose that is close to the size that we need. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna alter it. So you'll be seeing, what you're seeing here is us cutting the form apart and making sure that it fits the actual hide. We're stretching that hide out. It's a wet uh, leather and it feels very pliable. And what we're doing is we're stretching that around the form. And once we figure out where we need to enlarge this form to make it big, make that neck a little bit bigger in some of those areas, then we're gonna go through and we're gonna cut it apart. So the first step is getting that form to the right size. Once we have the form to the right size, now we're gonna start posing it. So we're gonna start here, we're cutting apart the legs and we're starting to move those, those legs, getting it to the right position that we want. We're gonna start turning the head here and we're getting that head so when that animal is looking on the wall, when it's on the wall and it's looking out into the customer's room, in this case, Eric's room, that it's gonna be a great representation of, of what kind of what he saw on that mountain. And we wanna relive those adventures through this pose. So we're getting something that's really showing off the sides of this thing and showing off the horns on this guy. Now, if you're not familiar with taxidermy, the only portion of the skull that we use is the skull cap. So we're not using any other portion, just that small area where the actual horn attaches to the skull. And that's gonna get attached to our form. There's a little cutout here that we're going to stick it in here. And then that's gonna get shaped a little bit. There's not very much meat on there. Um, but we're gonna shape that and where we're gonna put our eyes and our ear canals in. Now the form only has so much muscle shape to it. So we're gonna add some other um, mache here and there just to build up some of those muscles. Also to hide any indents where the foam, where we poured our foam. Everywhere we cut it, we had to pour and rebuild those areas and those gaps with uh, pour foam as well. So now we're gonna come back in here with some mache, shape some of those muscles, shape the neck a little bit there. And once we get to that point, then we're gonna be switching over to actual clay. So the clay we use is just a simple water-based potter's clay. So that potter's clay we're gonna use to secure the glass eyes in place. The glass eyes are placed in the cutout on the form and the clay is used to shape the eyelids. Now that clay will harden over time, it will actually dry with the glue and the hide itself, and then it'll get rock hard. But that allows us to tuck the actual skin into the clay and get it nice and tight up to the actual glass eye to get that real natural look. Once the sculpting is done and all the clay is ready to go, now it's time to get that skin back on the form. Now we're just using a hide paste. This is a simple uh, glue that we use. It washes up with uh, soap and water very easily, um, but, but this will dry with the hide itself as well. And one thing about taxidermy is there's a lot of details that go into each mount. Everywhere that hide was skinned to take off the carcass, we're gonna be re-stitching to put it back on this form. So most animals are either uh, dorsal cut or cut down through the belly. Um, some things are tube cut, there's different things that can be done there. Um, the Ibex here was cut uh, down the belly. So that makes it pretty easy for us. We can kind of just drape the hide right over the form 
And with the hair on the Ibex, those seams hide really well. But as we're sewing here, we're gonna be filling those hooves back up with clay to rebuild the muscle and the bone structure um, that is not currently on the form. Once we get the hooves filled up with clay and shaped correctly, we're gonna set those on the leg, and here we're gonna start stitching them back up. Typically, we'll start on the leg and go down to the belly, and then once we get all four legs done, then we're gonna sew down the belly and I'm back to the butt. Now this is definitely a long part of the process. Um, you don't wanna rush the stitching, you want those seams to hold tight, but you also wanna make sure you're keeping the hair out of your seam as you're sewing. So it is a little bit of a slow process, a little bit of tedious work, um, but this is what brings those mounts all together and makes everything look good in the end. One of the last steps in the mounting process will be grooming. Grooming is very important because we want that hair to lay where we want it, and we don't want it to dry in kind of a funky cowlick or something like that. So we'll use screening sometimes to hold hair down, sometimes on the seam, or areas where it seems like it might be tight and want to drum up. But we want to make sure that that hair is laying flat and where it should be uh, to make that natural look. Now once the actual mount is finished being put together, we're going to set it off to the side to dry. Now we will check on it uh, if the next 24 hours to 48 hours, check on the face and certain areas, problem areas that can kind of pull and change as the leather dries. As that dries, it wants to stretch. So we want to make sure that our lip is staying tucked in, our eyes are staying tucked in, and nothing is distorting a little bit once it dries. We could go back and fix that, but we'd rather catch it in this part of the process. So we're going to keep an eye on that in the next 24 to 48 hours. Now for this piece, Eric chose a wall base. There are many different types of bases that you could choose for something like this, but a wall base is the perfect one because you can get it high off the ground and really show off the size of this animal. So we're heading here to the habitat department. Ryan's gonna be doing our rock work here. We make our own rocks in-house. That's one of the things that we specialize in where we're not buying some stuff off the market, but we're actually fabricating our own rocks here in-house, which means we can choose the texture that we want, we can choose the shapes and designs that we want too. But the rock we're using is just a rock panel. It's backed with foam, which makes it easy to cut and shape. So we're gonna start with a plywood backing, which goes to the wall, which attaches our hangers to the customer's wall. And off of that, we can build any type of rock structure that we would like to. Something like this, we're gonna build just something simple for the Ibex to stand on. Not too distracting, but enough to really showcase uh, the habitat and the scenery and the landscape that Eric hunted in. Habitat is another one of those areas that's very time consuming as we're starting with a blank colored rock and we're taking it and forming a rock feature and then hand painting it. So once we get this put together, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, but once this is all together, we're going to seam those areas that are missing, bring everything back to the right color that we need to, and we're going to finish it off with some nice habitat and some nice features. Now, in the photos that we looked at, from Eric's hunt, there was some snow, there were some thistles, different types of brush, so we're trying to incorporate those back into his mount. When Eric looks at his Ibex, we want him to see those mountains that he was hunting in and really bring that hunt back to life for him. Now, once the mount is complete, the, the habitat is complete, and everything is dry, we're gonna take this over into the finish department. Now, the finish department does a few things. We're repainting leather that will discolor over time, we're bringing um, shape if there's many missing areas in the horn where the horn attaches to the skin. We're going to repair those areas. We're also repairing inside of the nose and around the eyes. Now, when the, I mentioned earlier that the leather and clay can shrink a little bit and pull apart from the eye, that can create a hard edge. So we're going to come back in here with epoxy, a two-part epoxy, and we're going to just smooth that out and give a nice soft look around the eye. Now, we're also going to go inside the nostrils here as well. The skin only goes in so far and where, the, uh, where Brooke would have carved out the nose, you can see foam now. So we're gonna smooth that out, reshape the inside of those nostrils, and um, make a nice smooth look there. Once that epoxy work is done, we're gonna come back with the painting. We use airbrushes here to paint our animals, which gives a nice soft blend of colors. So we're gonna start from one end of the color spectrum to the other, starting with our lights, starting with our pinks, and going to blend it into our darks. So even on the nose pad here, we're gonna start with some pink, which gives you some nice, soft flesh tones in the inside of the nose, but also on those small cracks on the nose pad. So we're gonna get some color into those and you're gonna bring back with some browns, dark browns, and then finally, we're gonna end it off with some black, which gives that nice nose pad color. Now, as you see with this paint, we're just kind of putting it on the hair as well. We're gonna come back later here and use a, a brush, our fingers, paper towel, those types of things, and we're gonna be able to scrape it off the actual hair. 
The paint will cling to the leather and stay attached to that and it will actually flake off the hair, which gives a nice clean look when it's all said and done. Now to bring those final touches to Eric's mount here, we are going to add a little bit of clear Mod Podge to the eyelid to give that little wet look and also to the, to the nose pad itself. Now once this dries out, it'll be clear and it'll give a nice little glossy look to it, which just adds that final touch to these mounts. A Little bit of grooming to finish it out and this Ibex is ready to go. Now as I said in the beginning of this video, we were really focusing on the life size mount, but we also have Nick's wall pedestal here that has a nice rock base as well. This was made the same way. We did the same thing in the habitat department as well, recreating this rock shelf for it to showcase and it really brings this wall pedestal back to life. This could be hung on the wall by itself, but we really, really feel that adding this rock to it, it can help bring Nick's adventure back to him as well, help him relive that adventure when he sees his Ibex hanging up on this wall. Well, that's it. Thanks for joining us here as we walk through the process at Kanati Studio. If you have any questions about our taxidermy or anything, you can hit us up at KanatiStudio.com. Find us on Instagram or Facebook, or give us a call at our shop here at 717-933-4828. Well, that finishes up this project. We couldn't be more excited about the Ibex for the Muley Freak Boys. We're so excited about how they sh came out, and we can't wait to get these mounts back into their hands and see them in their offices or wherever they hang these guys. That's one of the coolest parts about putting these pieces together, is seeing the final shots when they're in the trophy room, the office, the home, wherever these mounts end up, it's always cool to see that final resting place and knowing that these guys are reliving their adventures every time they see their mounts. Thanks so much for joining us here and from all the team at Kanati Taxidermy, cheers. All right, it's Kanati delivery day. My full body mount Ibex just came from, from Kanati in Pennsylvania. Nick's just got here. I can't wait to rip this open and see what it is. The UPS guy's here. We got the crate, we're unloading it right now. Check it out. All right, the Kanati crate is here. It's got my full body mount, Ibex, Nick's shoulder mount, pedestal, and uh, couldn't be more happy. It's a day early, straight from Kanati Studio in Friarstown Road, Myerstown, Pennsylvania. And we're gonna open this sucker up. Here we go. I never wanted to get screws off so fast. Here we go. Ready? The big reveal. Oh, dang! Man, that's awesome. Look at that. Well, they even gave, they even made Nick little mittens for his hands. Look at this. There's little mittens for Nick's hands when they get cold. That'd be nice. Just slip your hands right in here, Nick. Give yourself little Ibex mittens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Man, this looks incredible. All right, well, we want to show you more, but we've got to figure out how to show you more, so. Go ahead. I got Peyton there on the inside. He's going to hold it while I underdo, undo these washers and screws combos. So Peyton, don't ruin Nick's mount. Don't ruin Nick's mount. Jeez, that's a giant. I anchored those in pretty good. That thing was not moving on shipping on the way here. Okay, Peyton, taking up the... Okay, there's only two screws left on each side holding it. Here she comes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Woo, big daddy! Boy, look at that big guy. Toad, huh? Looks good. Wow. Looks amazing. Let's uh, put it somewhere, I guess, huh? Hey, why are you shaking? It's getting a little heavy. <laughs> but I don't have a very good grip on it. Bring it a little bit. Uh, we're going to put it right here. Oh my gosh. This thing looks like a giant from this side.
All right, Pete, go get Belmer. We're gonna need two people on this one. All right, we have our backup. These guys made it back from Myerstown, Pennsylvania from Kanadi Studio. They made it here to our shop in Muley Freak. Nick's, I don't know if I'm gonna send you yours, man. It looks pretty good here. But uh, anyway, absolutely, absolutely stellar work from Kanadi. The attention to detail is just amazing. From how they did the eyes, the nose, how they painted them up. The rock work is just phenomenal. I, I couldn't imagine something better. And this is the same type of habitat that I saw there in Kyrgyzstan. It's just amazing. You brought the actual snow back, right? Yeah, we brought the, we brought the actual snow back, okay? <laughs> All right, let's figure out a way to anchor this thing down. 